welcome back. I'm Mrs. Fletcher and today I'm going to show you how to get from your layout for your hallway glider to a fully assembled hallway glider. Let's get into it. The materials needed to assemble your hallway glider include your parts laid out on cardstock, a ruler, a marker or pencil to write with, liquid glue such as tacky glue, Elmer's glue, or wood glue, scissors, a utility knife, a piece of duct tape, a jumbo paper clip, and a cutting mat or scrap cardboard. Before you actually begin to assemble, you should be decorating your hallway glider. You can do this by using any sort of colored pencils, crayons, or markers to decorate it to be a cohesive theme because we are going to have a class vote to see who has the most appealing design. Make sure you color in the main body and the two fins. The air scoop area does not need to be colored in because it is going to go on the underside of the hallway glider. It's okay if you do not follow the lines because you're going to cut on these lines anyway, so it might make sense to overhang a little bit. Check out my hallway glider and the parts that were colored in. Once your glider is decorated, it's time to start cutting along the solid lines. The dashed lines are going to be where we're going to score and fold. Take your scissors and cut along the solid lines. Do not cut on the dashed lines yet. You should be cutting out your main body panel, your fins, and your air scoop. Now that you have all four parts cut, move your scrap aside, but don't throw them out yet. Now that you have all of your pieces cut out, including your main body panel, your two fins, and your air scoop, you're ready to start assembling. I already mentioned that you need to cut along the solid lines and the dashed lines. Here we have a dashed line that turns into a solid line. Take your scissors, and you're going to cut slits. So cut right up to the dashed line. Try not to get carried away. Sometimes students will get to that line and they'll just keep cutting all the way off so that you have one little strip and it's really hard to attach that back on. So just the three inch slit is where you're gonna be cutting. So you have these little flaps. The next step is to score on our dash lines so that we are ready to fold them. I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to score on the dash lines. If you do not have a cutting mat or an X-Acto blade, it's okay. You can try to do this without those items. You also might be able to use your scissors to score. Take a ruler and line up your ruler along the dash lines and your flap. When you score something, you are going to cut through some of the material, but not all the way through so that you are cutting to remove the piece like we did with our scissors. So essentially you are scratching the surface of the material. You take your X-Acto blade, keeping your fingers on the inside of your straight edge or your ruler. You don't want them hanging over because then you would cut into your fingers. Keep your fingers on the center of the ruler or to the left of the ruler. Take your blade and get it set against your straight edge and you're going to pull it down to scratch the surface of the material. You should hear the scratch being made. You should see the scratch on your paper but it should not be going all the way through. There should not be a smooth cut, just a scratch on the surface. Then when you try to fold this over, that scratch will open up and you will be able to get a nice 90 degree bend. If you do not have an X-Acto blade, you can do the same thing, but with your scissors. Take your scissors, open them up, and use the corner to scratch the surface of the material. I scratch the top, and I can fold this over, and I can get a very similar, if not the same effect.
We also need to complete this on this dashed line for the air scoop and on this dashed line for the main body panel. When you do your scoring for the air scoop, make sure it is just on the inside of the dash line. When it's time to bend your air scoop, place it so that it is face down, put your fingers roughly on the other side where the score line goes, and then fold over using the surface of the material to help you bend the material. Double check and make sure this fits on the inside of your air scoop. You should have the smaller gap towards the front and the larger gap towards the back. Mine fits, so I'm going to open this back up and just finish off. After I've scored this line, in this case, I'm not looking for a 90 degree angle. I'm just going to tilt it down because we want this to tilt down to the bottom corner of the hallway glider like this so that it is a slight slant. And when I glue it, it will be perfectly matched up to the corner. Now that my hallway glider is scored, bent, and ready with all of my parts, I'm ready to assemble with some glue. I have this tacky glue, Elmer's glue works fine, wood glue, but you do want a liquid glue. Here are my scraps from earlier. I like to smear my glue with some of my scraps. The first thing that I'm going to do is take this glue and put some glue on the edge of my main body panel and take my scrap piece and use it as a brush to smear that glue along that edge. I'm also going to put some glue on the inside of this edge. Once you have your glue on, line up the bottom of your tail end and match it to the bottom corners. And notice I have a little bit of extra glue in there. I don't want any extra glue. I want this to be really clean. So take the right angle of your scrap piece and you can just smear it along in that corner to squeegee out the extra glue. My glue will dry clear, so I don't have to go crazy, but I don't want any globs of glue or drips of glue. Hold this in place until the glue starts to set. It will take a minute or two. After your glue has set, flip over your hallway glider and we're going to glue in the air scoop, which will go towards the front or the nose of the hallway glider. Take your glue, and smear some glue on either side of the air scoop. You can use your scrap piece to smear the glue so it is evenly distributed along the entire flap. Remember, we want the shorter front or the eighth inch part 
to go towards the front of the hallway glider. So that means the smaller gap is in the front and the larger gap is in the back. Again, we're going to hold this until our glue has start to set. Now that I have my main body panel with the slant in the back and the air scoop towards the nose underneath, it's time to attach the fins. The fins are going to go on the back end with the high point on the back of the hallway glider. The 90 degree angle should match the 90 degree angle of the back edge of the hallway glider. And it should be flush with the table. Make sure you put the decorated side of the fins out. If you do not want the blank side of the fins on the inside, you can take some time to decorate the inside of the fins as well. Use your glue to place a bead of glue along the bottom of the fins. Use your scrap material to smear that glue so you get a nice evenly distributed coat of glue. Then place your fin onto your hallway glider, making sure the 90 degree angle is matched and your fin is not hanging off the bottom of your main body panel. You want this to be flush. Repeat that step for your other fin. Hold the fins in place until your glue sets. Now that my hallway glider construction is complete for the main parts, the last thing we need to do is add a hook to the center of gravity on the underside. Find your paper clip and we're going to bend this so that it looks like a hanger. Take your thumb and place it on the middle area of the larger curve of the paper clip and bend up that larger curve so that it is a T shape like this. Then we're going to fold it down so that it is flat. Then bend so that we have a obtuse or a large angle here and again and again so that we have a shape that is similar to a clothing hanger with a triangle and then a hook over here. We're going to mark this so that the hook is curving towards the front end or the nose, the air scoop part of the hallway glider. We want this to be centered and we want to find the center of gravity so we can keep this evenly distributed. In order to find the center of gravity, you want to find the section where you can balance your hallway glider on one finger. Once you find that area, this is where we want to have our transmission or our clip. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it just gives us a rough idea of where it needs to be. And we want to put our bend at, at the top of the triangle in that location. Mark the bend of the paper clip with a writing utensil, whether it's a marker, a pen, or a pencil. Use a piece of duct tape to tape on your transmission. Line up your paper clip in the desired location and slide your duct tape underneath and press to secure the paper clip. I don't need a piece quite this large, but I wanted some extra so that I knew I would be able to get that paper clip on securely. And then I can fold this up and use my scissors to trim it.
Now I have my hallway glider fully assembled with the air scoop attached on the bottom and my paperclip transmission. Make sure that if you look straight down on the side of your main body, the paperclip is not poking out on the bottom. We want that to be tucked in underneath the bottom edge. If your paper clip is sticking out like this, make sure to press it in so that you cannot see it. Wow, 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 isn't it beautiful? I bet yours is just as beautiful as well. Now that it's done and it's ready to go, we just have one more thing to do and that's to let it dry. Sometimes everyone is just so excited to try their hallway glider. They try to launch it and the glue is not 100% dry and it falls apart. So at least wait a couple of hours. I usually wait until the next day so I know for sure that the glue is 100% cured. I'm gonna show you how to launch this hallway glider, test it, evaluate its flight, and make adjustments if needed in the next video. I'll see you there.